Hello, I'm Gustavo and I'm going to present you uh, how I did unit testing with Sales.js. So, a little bit about me. I'm a founder and tech CEO of two startups that make software and hardware for factories manufacturing. I'm, I live in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. It's just in the middle of Brazil. I have 11 years developing hardware and software and been using sales since version 0.10. Uh, along the way, I've trained many devs in testing, developing. <coughs> so, uh, the software that I develop, it runs on factories that works 24-7. So, if the system fails, if something goes bad, it doesn't matter the time, someone's gonna call me. So, also, I work with junior and senior devs. So, I need to guarantee that uh, a junior change in the code won't break anything so the software can't fail at all and to guarantee that everything is running everything is good i started advocating for software testing so this is the best practice and something that i do <coughs> so uh, i've created a new repo it's online on github so go there uh, add stars so i can see uh, fork and expand Ooh, so we're only testing right now APIs so start a new sales repo with no front-end option and so instead of <coughs> going through generic examples let's do a real-life example that will go all the way using the same so we're gonna use an API that uh, in the market, in uh, e-commerce, purchase all the items from a cart. So the input will be an array uh, of the cart with uh, unique product IDs, that is a database code for the product, the label, <coughs> there is a pretty product name, the amount purchased, so the quantity that is in the cart, and in the output, we will use a uh, success, true or false. If an item is missing, the, the items and the quantity, and also uh, what was purchased. So this example has many specific uh, problems that you go in many real life situations. So this is how we're going to store the a product the SKU, there is stock keeping unit, that is unique ID, uh, the label and the quantity. So, how we gonna test this API if we go manually, just like the classic way most devs, especially uh, devs that don't have many tools or not used to then uses. The first thing is we need to set up the products in the database so we need to go to the database add all the products with quantity price and everything and then we go to the cart controller in the postman uh, and do a call using uh, a raw json so i'm trying to to buy all these three items so there are these items in my database and Okay, so what we do, set the database, call the API, verify the database for the result. The result. So if I have five items in stock and purchase two, I'll, be, I'll have three items. And if the test go wrong, the database is it's already uh, bad for testing. So we need to set up the database again Call the API, verify it for the result. The result is not the ones that we want. We need again to check out the database. So all the time we're changing the database, checking the database and over and over. So we need to do lots and lots and lots of rework just by setting up the database, checking if something changes, if something goes bad and then going back all the way. So you start uh, doing questions, so, okay, these tests run well, but did I set up the database before? 
you can track if you cover all the cases okay you start tracking if uh, you're gonna purchase an out-of-stock item and it won't change the database and then you change the code to fix another use case like uh, purchase two items and okay but did you broke what you tested before did you did your new code uh, has all the test cases you did before so if uh, another dev in the future change a model or change a helper will it breaks other functionality that uses the same uh, models or helpers <coughs> lots of time are lost just by setting up and verifying the database for every single test you need to check uh, if you're purchasing an item you're going to change the database in the end so you need to verify the database and change again to the previous state so you can run again the test and it's very boring so you need to be all the way changing and changing your data this is a very simple case but some cases you have like many models that are going to be changed all the way so uh, that's uh, that's a very boring way to test and in the worst case <laughs> you're gonna do the real testing in production because as you don't have any regression tests or anything that guarantees that the new code doesn't break anything else the real test with everything together with all the APIs being called will be done in the production when the customer will call an API and it will broke because you change a model to fix another part of the code. So that's the worst case scenario. And it already happened to me. And the customer is working 24 seven. If uh, a deploy breaks something, they will call. So we need time to deploy and all that stuff. So we guarantee, but it's always like, a huge risk you can't do just deploy the code and hope that it won't break so that's why I started automating and creating a better way to code to code and test the code so let's test and let's make it work the first thing is uh, clone the repo and you can expand in the end I have a few suggestions what you can do so you can really learn what we're doing what is cool the git repo is on that URL. So let's say talk a little about the test framework that we're going to use. Uh, using tests, uh, it's a good way to think about software architecture because before uh, coding, you need to think uh, inputs, outputs, and test cases. So you're gonna build better software just by thinking if something really makes sense or something is kind of crazy. You need uh, to set up only once to a project and run. So uh, it might look a little bit of work, but it's very quickly. Uh, I'm going step by step explaining what's going on. So it takes more time. You can automatically rerun all tests. So if you change something and broke somewhere else, you will detect in the same time. You can run it automatically. I'm gonna show it in the end. And also you can do like test driven development. That is pretty cool. And for some cases it's much better to, to get to the high quality code. So this is a real life example. There is a manufacturing software that has many types of uh, KPIs that uses the same uh, helper, the same services in the end. So there are like 200 tests going on. And if you change something, you can break one of these tests, one of these functions. So it makes the code very, very robust and it won't break easily. So for these tests, where we're going to use uh, a testing framework uh, it's mocha and chai so mocha in a nutshell it run tests from test files so going back here every single line of these is a test so the runner that finds these tests 
and run one by one is mocha. So mocha is very simple, and but it don't have the assertions library. Just assertion is part of the test when you need to check if uh, something's true, if uh, the expected result is what you're getting. So you need to use one of the many compatible libraries. And the most used together with Mocha is Chai. So we're using Chai to do cool assertions like uh, comparing object arrays and simple comparisons, catching fails, catching throws and all that stuff. And Mocha Chai, it uh, runs very well with sales because of the bootstrap, you're gonna see it later. A uh, jest in another way doesn't run as well. So that's why we're going to Mocha Chai. We're also using uh, Stumbu. There is, uh, now it's called NYC. It's uh, just a code coverage uh, lib that says, oh, how much, of, how much percent of your code are already being tested and a library called super test that is used to call apis just like an axios or a fetch but you can make assertions directly just like oh and calling that api and i need the the return code to be uh 404 not pound for example so you can do like that and chest for headers and all that stuff very easily. <coughs> so uh, we're going to install the packages on the on the project. We're going to use for that case sales Mongo uh, to use like a real database and see how a real life database works. So we're going to uh, use also Mocha, Chai, NYC, there is Istanbul and super tests all together. So, the first thing is uh, setting up the environment. So, in that case, we're going to use three different environments you can see on the, on, on the project. And the cool thing is, uh, on different environments, we use different sales uh, configurations. So, for the production environment, it's all manually configured, the host, the, the database name. For the development, <coughs> it can use another name, but there is a specific database just for testing. So the test database won't use your production or development, <coughs> and it will all, always drop. So we're dropping the database and recreating. So we guarantee that all indexes and unique and all constraints are created, created from zero to use. And also, you're doing like a development, uh, creating data and doing all that stuff. And then you run a test and it just drop all the data you, you were testing. That will be the worst. So using a completely separate test, uh, database name and database configuration will make all the tests clean and it will guarantee you won't lose any data when you're running the test. So that's why we have three different environments there. And we set up the scripts. These scripts are a little changed from the, the sales configuration. So uh, we're going to use the primarily the test one. Uh, we're setting the node env as test. We're calling the NYC with Mocha to do the, to do the code coverage. There are like a few <clears throat> a few configurations there are like uh, default to to mocha it's on the examples but what it's really doing is looking for files called .test.js and looking if it have all the structure needed on mocha to run also we need to greatly increase uh, some hooks timeout because uh, these two hooks they when bootstrapping the first time, they can take a long time and it will time out and your test will fail. So just a, a very quick solution. So let's see how's the test structure, how we're going to start creating our first test. For 
think about the sales structure, we have like API and cart and purchase JS. For testing, we'll do exactly the same. We have test, controllers, cart, and purchase.test.js. So the test folder will have exactly the same structures as the sales API folder. And also, this bootstrap file, it's uh, an example from, from the sales.js docs. What this file really do is, okay, we're going to run the tests. It's a small script to run the test, call some code, and that's all. So this bootstrap file, it will run before all, <coughs> all the tests. And it, what it's really doing is uh, starting sales. So it will start sales, doing the sales lift. So we can guarantee that all the that sales will work and we can call on test functions like uh, call models and call helpers and all that stuff. The APIs will work, we can call APIs for testing. So the full sales will be running during the tests. So this is pretty critical, otherwise we only be able to test uh, JS code and not really uh, the integration and null with with sales so this bootstrap file what is doing is exactly that lifting sales prior to test so the test will be run with sales lifted this is something that works very well with mocha so that's one of that's the main reason that we're using that so let's start testing uh, how is the test case structure inside the file we're going to use uh, a describe. This describe it organizes the test into structures. We can think about uh, folders or sub items organization, just like inside a JSON. So usually we follow the folder structure. So the this, so this way you have cart controller and purchase. If we go back on the first example that I gave the screenshot, you can see that it has a name and many checks. These checks goes through all these, the, these folders. And it is the test case. Uh, it's called it because it will do something. It will, so it is a test case. <clears throat> so, and assert there, do a comparison or expect something or compare or just fail. So you can do if a uh, pretty complex uh, test case, you just assert fail. So this is a fail test. It will, you, it will run and it will fail, but it's the basis to start testing if it goes well. Something that is uh, quite different is we don't import describe or it, it's global. So this is the result. You can see here the cart controller, the purchase and the fail test. So it follows the describe, describe and it uh, <coughs> structure. The code coverage from NYC in the end. So we're not really testing all the code right now. And a little more of glossary of what we're doing. The, the structure is, we start with fixtures. There is the, what we need to set up, constants, DB, the days that we need to the test, it can be shared. So many tests uses the same DB configuration. The expected results. So when we're creating a test, we think, okay, uh, how's my database uh, status? So we configure and say, okay, if I call the API with uh, that fixtures, what's the expected result? So we think about that and we get the result with, with it. So we run the test, there is calling the function and assert the result. Okay, calling one or more assert functions to check if everything is okay. So every single test, we've set up all that. When writing code, uh, thinking about the fixtures, inspected result, 
and the the, the function the solution as a black box uh, can help us isolate complexity and write better code so that's something that uh, learning testing helps a lot to do so the first test case we're going to do a test case to test for purchasing a single product in stock so we're going to call the api cart purchase and get the result so let's do all these structure step by step for this test case so the first thing is setting the db and configurating so we're going to use uh, the b4 from mocha that runs before all the tests so we're going to destroy all from from products to guarantee that the database is clean and we're going to uh, create each of the products from our products fixture so that's why we create a test environment because most every single test we're gonna clean the database before setting it up so if we do in a development uh, database we might lose some data and we can use before that uh, you run only once before the following describes we use before if we're not change the database at all just like uh, if we ha if the products didn't have uh, the quantity we could create and everything we and everyone we use it all together so using before each before every single test it will destroy and create it again so uh, we also create fixtures for the test. Here we're creating the database. So we create two different products that we're going to use. And to purchase a single product in stock, we created the cart. There is, has a single uh, the product ID, SKU, with the quantity of four. Uh, we know that the, the result must be the total price that uh, from the purchase the the purchase items and the missing items something that is good is uh, when you're creating the test you're gonna really see what you want from the result so we're gonna stop we're gonna think about it and that's the best way to think uh, the code was written after the start of the presentation so before I started writing the first test, the, the specifications, the model, and everything was wrong. It didn't have the expected result. The total price, it, don't ha it didn't have the purchase items list. So when writing the first test, we can understand and define the results in format. That's why this is different from the first slides, the example. And then we run the test that we're sending this payload to the API and then we're gonna assert uh, and it's fail because it's not implemented so but a good practice is uh, force the test to fail we do that because if the test fails we we might be really testing something and also on this test uh, we're asserting the the results comparing with beep equal that will compare the object attribute by attribute and also we need to check the database so we're going to do a find one to get the product stock and check <coughs> if uh, it's equal to six so if we're purchasing four and had ten previously you need to go out six so if the api changes the database we need to check the API uh, for the return on the database. So we're gonna write the code. So here's a very quick solution. Uh, I want to go into it. So it, it would want over all the cases, but it will fix the test. So uh, here it's the, how the code looks like. We're not testing all the branches and all the code options. 
So NYC helps you to find uh, if the, the code coverage is high or not. So uh, here we find the, we did the first test. So let's do another test case. We're using the same. Uh, so we go step by step all again. So fixtures on the database, we're using exactly the same. So there's nothing to do, nothing to change. Uh, we do another, uh, the fixtures for the test. We're buying a product that on this configuration is out of stock. So quantity is zero. The expected result is uh, it needs to fail. We have a total price zero and all the list of missing items. So the test run, it's all the same. It's just a uh, copy and paste. So it will only call and work. And then uh, it's going to fail. The format that we wrote in the first code is wrong. Uh, it's a very, very, very common problem that uh, crashes the front end and all that stuff. There is the missing items. It's expected to be uh, the same as the purchase. There is a object array, but it's a string array only with the SKU name, the unique ID. So as the code has a, a wrong format, it will fail. So the code, you can think, oh, my code is correct, but it's not. If the format's not right, something is going to crash. So by setting tests and unit tests, you can get the correct format and get a very high quality code. So by fixing the code, it's uh, on the repo, you can see the commits and see what's changed. Uh, the, the tests are all good and passing. So, uh, what about more test cases? These test cases, uh, you can go and, and expand the, from the repo. And you can see that uh, when you implement these tests, it will break. So, you can very quickly fix, fix the code and make it work. So what if we purchase multiple out of stock items? So if we think about another situation, if you have a cart with on stock and out of stock items, what should happen? So, okay, this is a business question, not like a technical question, but it comes from a test. So if I have on stock and out of stock, I will purchase nothing or I will purchase only the own stock items. So what really should happen? So if I have carts with quantity zero, zero items, will it break? Will it work? Will it make like a zero item purchase? What's, go what's happening? Uh, parameters we're not really testing. So we send a, like a bad cart, what's going to, to happen? If we try to purchase a product that is not uh, on the database yet, or it was removed, what's going to happen? <coughs> and a lot more can happen in production. So when the code breaks in production, what we really, really do is we get the, the case that breaks. What's the database and feature configuration that breaks? We run against the API to see if, if it's correct. It's really breaking. And then we convert this error into a unit test. So, okay, if we do that configuration with that fixtures, it will break and then we fix. And by fixing it, uh, all the tests are, are running together. So we guarantee that this fix won't break anything else. So, uh, clone the repo and tests. Do this specific case like purchasing multiple out of stock and cart with on stock and out of stock. It's very simple to implement and test and it will break, it will fail. So by doing that, you can uh, really learn and try and see what's going on. So uh, I'm gonna do some tips and best practices. So things that you should test. Uh, controllers, you test for functionality, 
from user parameters, from edge cases. It's like, okay, they do like uh, very crazy things that uh, will it break the code or we just return an error, sim simple error. Uh, we can test for helpers and services. Services is just like the, the controller's uh, style of writing code and helpers is just like the actions to with a writing code. Uh, we can test policies going through controllers. We can test custom validations, that's very important. So uh, when we talk about the cart in the cart format, we can add to the controller a custom validation. It's very good to test it, to isolate it, so we have a better code. And by doing that, uh, we remove a complexity from the code. The code will be the same. And we know that the parameters will come good because we have a custom validation on that before. Uh, what we should not test is the model validations because model validations uh, and action to validations, not the custom ones, the standard ones, uh, they are all uh, blueprints and sales automatically uh, generated code. We, we should not test because this code, uh, they work in a very specific way. So it will fail, it's not because uh, the code is bad, it's because we're using it wrong. So no, don't need to test like, oh, let me test the product.find function. Okay, if we're using that uh, standard action, it, you already know how it works, you don't need to really test it. And also config files that don't have tests. Uh, on the repo, I've added a very quick configuration that only checks on the API folder. So it will pretty ignore most of the folders to, to do the coverage. So uh, when we're testing, the best way to organize the code is uh, making a very simple controller because the controller users have uh, user inputs. So when we are uh, having a heavy controller, it will get lots and lots of complexity. So instead of having a very complex controller, we can get all the functionality in small services and helpers. So all these small codes uh, will go to, this, to a simple controller that get the user input uh, and get the result. So we can create small blocks and heavily test them. Something that we can do in that previous example is create a helper that removes a item from stock. It tries to remove from stock. So <coughs> by isolating that, uh, that code into this helper, we can use it all around. So on cart purchases, on on events that you lose stock for some reason, like expiry date. You can have all the different situations that you remove from stock, you reuse it, and you can test it very deeply, very heavily. So on the controller, you only use that code and do very simple controller. So most of the controller tests will be a single test that tests everything together if it's working and for user inputs to, to test if the inputs are working well, if we're doing like some manipulation on inputs, if it's going well, but most of the testing should be uh, uh, not on the controller, but on helper services, there is uh, where the logic should really be. Um, something that is also good to know is out of control variables, just like a date now, there's every code, there is a real time. Okay, if uh, in that example, we can say that, okay, if the expiry, if a product reached the expiry date, it needs to, to send an alert. So to check if the, if the product expired, we need to compare with date now, there's real time code or if you're using like a crypto code, like 
uh, hashing or encrypting. Sometimes we use uh, random variables. So if we need to really use out of control variables, we should remove it from inside the code and turn it to, into a parameter. So in a code that uh, checks for expiry date, it will have a parameter that is now as a parameter. And before calling that code, we generate the date dot now. By removing the date from now from inside the code, we can really test it and by making it testable, we can remove most of the errors from the code. So, and another the problem that we have is never test the code with random generated variables or in this case, uh, if we fix the seed generator the, to use always the same or copy the results into external file, we can have the same input and same output all the way. Otherwise, your test may pass or not pass based on luck. So, if you do a test and, it, and the test pass on the first run, uh, maybe your code already worked for the test and maybe you are not testing at all. So, by changing the values to force a fail, you guarantee that the test is really tested. Uh, if we're out of time, just like, okay, you need to, to deliver a quick API very fast. So, uh, if you create like a single test case, instead of not testing at all, you, uh, you document your code, you have a, a basic testing, and if something breaks, you go back and add that case. So, <coughs> it's a very quick way if we're out of time to start testing and guarantee that the that code will evolve into a better code. So also test defined interfaces is just like a uh, documentation. So if you need to see how, how I use that helper, how I use that service, how I use that function, you can check the examples that you see input and output and how it really works. So uh, it's very good as a, a very uh, a documentation that it's always up to date because if it's not up to date, the test will fail and it will break. Also, if you have fixtures that are too large, just like uh, in some examples, I have 300 or 400 data to, to analyze. I create it into an external file. So don't don't leave the uh, huge fixtures in the code and some cool things also that can can do when we're running tests in that example i have 200 test cases so by running uh, grep and the name of the function you want to test it will run only the functions that match that name so i can do like card controller or purchase or whatever function it has and by using grep, only the test case that I want, it will run. Also, you can uh, auto-generate data. Uh, there is a very cool library called Captain Vane. And we can use it to create like uh, products and so uh, many products on the database. We can users, we can have uh, lots and lots of of random generators and so we can populate the database to to make tests but when using that library you need to guarantee that the data never changes so there are like two quick ways to do that the first one is uh, generate the data on the first run and copy that data you log it and copy that into a fixture so you can see the data see how it well you can make some fine tuning and copy into a fixture, or you can just feed the random seed on fake generator. By fixing the random seed on every run, it will generate the same data. So it's a very quick way to generate and test, and it's already integrating with sales. So it's pretty easy, pretty quick to use. And 
On the last thing is, okay, you have like uh, many people working the code, you have many tests and all that stuff, and you can run all the tests automatically, you can run against many versions of Node and very many versions of your database. So by using that, uh, we can auto-generate the test file. It's on GitHub, it's called Actions, and on GitLab, it's called Pipelines. So I auto-generated the this file and do just uh, two small changes. The first one is I've added the MongoDB in, into it that you can see the the on the name start MongoDB that uh, just starts a MongoDB instance together and I've changed the npm commands in the end to do npm run lint to run the linter and npm test to run the tests so this code what's really doing is getting all the commits and running one by every time commits and push it will run so in this example uh, I've created the, the test but it failed because MongoDB was not there and then by changing the versions and setting it all to run the tests and test that way it will everyone that is developing on this repo will be notified if the test if the test fail if it crashes so when working with a with a team is very good because some commits uh, break tests and should not be merged at all so you can see that the commit's not good yet and need to fix the tests and testing. So this way, uh, it's, it's much more guaranteed that you have a very stable and very cool REPL. So this is the REPL. Uh, I really recommend that you clone it, you fork it, and you, you can run the tests, you can check the code and also you can create more test cases and you see it break and you can fix the code it's a very simple code very simple case so it's very good to only test if you can if how it works and everything so thank you thank you all for for the time and for listening these are my primary social networks so you can find me on linkedin or github and also meet me at the salescast community on discord the link is on salescast website so and also on sales.js website you go there join the community and you can find me there you can ask questions we can discuss the best practices uh, and everything else thank you very much for your time and see you in the community